seconds. Anyhow, let's go ahead and jump in. The inspector is going to give you information, various information on um, audio clips, MIDI clips, as well as MIDI notes. So let's start with uh, MIDI clips. If I select, you can see this area is blank up here. This is where the inspector is going to display information once you select a clip. Um, with a MIDI clip, you're basically going to have these two things here, the position. So within the track, you're on bar 7, and that's beat 1 and the first 16th note. These are uh, by bars, beats, 16th notes, and ticks. Um, and then the length is four bars, one you can see up here one two three four you can use these arrows to I'll go down and then you can see we move to bar five I'll arrow up to go back to the original position you can also type in a position okay now the length uh, self-explanatory you can change that information just the same as the position. If you double click on the MIDI clip, you now have access to the MIDI notes. And if I select a MIDI, MIDI note here, we now have additional information available to us. The position is the same, um, bar seven, but we're on beat four and uh, 16th note and the tick position. So that's a bit more fine for when you're dealing with specific notes or MIDI notes. There's, it's going to be more detailed than if you're working with a general clip. And then of course you have the length, 16th note, three ticks there. You can, uh, you know, type in a length there. So 0.01. I'll do 3.3, enter, you see it lengthens, I'll control Z and return it to as it was. We are on G1 on the keyboard, this note. You can arrow up and it will move your note up. I typically will grab Because when you grab the MIDI notes within the editor here, you're going to get a uh, audition. The sound will be auditioned, at least if you have that so turned on in your, in your preferences. It's on by default. You can turn that off. Whereas if I move the note here, I do not get a sound preview. But just know that that's available. And lastly, here you have the velocity which will correspond here. So if I arrow up, you see this one here corresponds. And if I go down, and you should see a change in the color of the velocity information, whether you, you know, you're going lower or higher, the color will deepen the higher you go. So that's just something that can give you, just, just watch this here. That's something that can help you as a quick reference when you are editing MIDI information. The darker colored velocity bars are going to be higher. Um, the lower the velocity, the lighter. So I'm going to escape out of the editor. And let's move on to audio. Now you can see we have even more options with the audio clip. We have the position, which is just the same as the MIDI clip, the length. Of course, you can alter these just the same. But we also have, in addition, a fade in. So if I up arrow, keep an eye on this corner here of the audio clip. I'll arrow up. And then you now have a fade in. You can drag this manually 
and it's going to move based on your snap setting. So my snap is currently set to bar. I'm going to press S, turn the snap off. I can now freely adjust this wherever I'd like. If I press S and turn the snap on, now it snaps by bar. If you're using the inspector to make that adjustment, it's going to disregard the snap. And of course there is fade out here. Your level, and I recorded this audio track from the Maelstrom here. I set this up as a record source and recorded directly into this audio track. Uh, you can see if I drop down the in, I'm on zeroizer, and this is zeroizer, and I've muted the MIDI track. When I recorded it in, it, this, you can see this waveform is pretty small. It was pretty quiet, so I raised it up just above a quarter of a dB. And um, of course, you can double click and type. Lastly, you have transpose. So let's solo that. Okay. And I'm just going to raise that up by three. Of course, the higher you go, the more you're going to move away from the original sound as far as the quality of it. But Reason is pretty good with this. So, and you see the calculating here, that circle spinning? Pay attention to that there. When you initially tr do certain, perform certain audio functions within Reason, it's going to apply the function in real time and you're, you're gonna hear the effect, but it's not gonna be a high quality effect. Reason then performs the calculation uh, in the background and you have this indicator once it's finished you're gonna have a higher quality uh, transposition in this case of the audio information that's going to then play back in the future once it's done with that calculation but you will hear something in the beginning but that's not the final that's not the final render for lack of a better word um, so just know that that's there and let's go ahead and play that back hear how the Transposed audio sounds. Okay, and I'm going to control Z and just take that back to its original position there at the transpose and so that's everything that's the inspector uh, it's simple but can be useful and provides good information for clips and MIDI notes so uh, yeah there you are thanks for watching okay I almost forgot one other item here um, Within the inspector, if you select a clip, a MIDI clip for instance, as we have here, and then another one, you then have this equal sign that you'll notice. Now that, as the pop-up tooltip shows, it's going to match the value of whichever one you selected first. So. I'll select that the top one here first, control click or command click for the Mac on the bottom one, and when you hit the match value symbol there, you see it's going to shrink that bottom one to match the one that we selected first. I'll control Z, you can see this expands out here, okay, and um, so selecting the top the bottom you're gonna match the lengths if you come 
and open up the editor. Select a MIDI note and say let's select this one. You've got mesh values everywhere here um, for the particular note on the keyboard, for the length, and for the position. Now there has usually you get one here as well. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Maybe they're both at they're, they're both at 84. That's why. But if you had different velocities for these notes, then you'd have another match value symbol there. So, uh, and and again, it's going to match whichever one you select first. So I'll select there, the second one, and what will I match? I'll match the position. So when I select the match value here, it should bring this second note that I selected back. Okay, control Z and let's do the note so it should move this bottom one up to E2. Okay, that's just something that I forgot to mention and I think that's everything now. All right, bye-bye.